men always ought to ought to so that is priority God is saying as a man you must have a vision as a man you must have a direction as a man as a father you must have a priority you must have a priority welcome to maximize life the television broadcast from new wine church london Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Maximize Life. On this program, our aim is to challenge you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olaware the senior pastor of New Wine Church. Today's message is a call to men to take their relationship with God to the next level. Irrespective of what may have come your way, God has designed you for accomplishment and fashioned you for success. Men, let me begin to admonish you on today's message with seven insights from our foundation scripture. That's Luke 18 verses 1 to 8. Here is the message titled, Don't Quit, You Are a Finisher. God bless you. Let's go in our Bible to Luke chapter 18. we we'll read from verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Say, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him say, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would know for a while. But afterward he said to himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by a continual coming, she wearies me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect? Will cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? Praise the Lord. That was a tremendous encouragement. Looking at the entire passage of the scripture that I read. That was God saying that I love to answer your prayer. God is saying, if the unjust judge... The one that had no regard for men, the one that had no regard for God, ultimately answered somebody's request. How much more our heavenly father, God is saying, when you bring your request to me, I will answer. Whenever you approach God, you must approach God with the knowing that God will answer your prayer. Don't approach God not knowing what will happen to your prayer. Because if you do without fail, you will doubt your prayer. And the Bible says a person who doubt is unstable in all his way. They are like the waves of the water of the sea. They move up and they move down. And so when you approach God, your father, there must be confidence on the inside of you. To know that you know, that you know, that God will answer your prayer. That was exactly what God was communicating to us through this story. But that's not where I'm going. The verse 1 of this story caught my attention. Verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them. That men, men, fathers, always ought to pray and not lose heart. Fathers, they always ought to pray and not lose them. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Oh, Jesus was saying, fathers are not meant to be quitters. They are not meant to carry their bags and disappear. They are meant to confront issues in prayer. They are meant to stand in the place of prayer. Men, not sometimes, men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Irrespective of what may have come your way, you were designed for accomplishment. You were fashioned to succeed. You were fashioned to stay the course and to finish your race. Jesus was speaking here to the disciples, to fathers, to men. He encouraged them not to give up, irrespective of the circumstances of life. Not the men around you say you are not a quitter. You are a finisher. Oh, even me, I didn't hear you. Nudge them. I didn't ask you for permission. Nudge them. Say you are not a quitter. Say you are a finisher. Oh, come on, nudge them properly. Wake them up. Yeah, that's good. Say you are not a quitter. You are a finisher. Oh, come on, once again, help me nudge them. Yeah. Let them know they received something in the house of the Lord today. Say you are not a quitter. You are a finisher. It will amaze you that you have just ministered to somebody this morning. It will amaze you that you have just reached out to somebody today. You don't know the impact of the confession you make in the house of the Lord. You don't know. The statement men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. It's a call to men to recognize Seven insights that I will be sharing with men today and those of us who have the responsibility to bring up or to rear up or to raise young children who are men, who are boys. The first insight is that it is a call to spiritual awakening. Men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. It's a call to men to pay attention to their spiritual life. It's a call to spiritual awakening. It's a call to intimate relationship with God. It's a call to deeper work with God. It is a call to hunger after God and after righteousness. It is a call to seek God. It's a call to dedicate your life to God. It's a call to serve God. It is a call to embrace the purpose of God for your life. It's a call to restore men to front line. It's a call to say to men, you are important. Take your place spiritually. It is a call to develop vibrant and thriving relationship with the Lord. This is the time for men to seek the Lord with all their heart. If there is any one time in history that men must seek the Lord, this is the time. This is the time for fathers to seek the face of the Lord for their families. This is the time for fathers to seek the face of the Lord for their wives. This is the time for fathers to seek the face of the Lord for their children. This is the time for fathers to engage in spiritual warfare. Men always ought to pray and not to give up. You were not designed to give up. You were not designed to cave in. You were not designed to throw in the towel. You were not designed to pack your bags and disappear. You were not. You were designed to stay the course. You were designed to make your mark. God spoke concerning Abraham in Genesis 18, verse 19. For I have known him, for I have relationship with him. That word know means koinonia, means relationship. I have known Abraham in order that he may command his children and his household after him. God said, I know what Abraham will do. I have relationship with Abraham. Abraham will leave his family after God 
will shepherd his family to follow the purpose of God. That is the agenda of God for every man under the sound of my voice. Every man who is born again in our world today. God wants you to take the leadership of your own and to lead your family in the way that they should go. Train up your children in the way that they should go so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. God wants you to come to the place of spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening. The days are over that all the wives will be in the house of the Lord with their children and the fathers will not be found. Those days are over. Somebody say amen. amen. These are the days of spiritual awakening. These are the days when fathers provide the leadership. These are the days when fathers provide the mentorship. Number two, it is a call to take your place. Every man under the sound of my voice, every father, you have a place. You have a place. In your family, you have a place. In the lives of your children, you have a place. In the life of your wife, you have a place. In the life, in your community, you have a place. In this nation, you have a place. You have a place. The days are over that men are no longer going to be visible. God is calling you to take your place. Take your place in the lives of your children. In your marriage. In the lives of your family. Take your place. Take your place. The Bible says let your light so shine. That people may see your good works. That they may glorify your father who is in heaven. Let your light so shine. God is calling you to make your mark. God is calling you to make your impact. Take your place in your family. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In Genesis 3 verse 9, the Bible said, The Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Now God was not asking for location here. God was asking for position. Where are you? In the affairs of your family, where are you? In the life of your children, where are you? In the life of your wife, where are you? You see, it was when men abdicated their responsibility, when man could not be found, that was why the serpent stepped in and took advantage of the father man who was not at home. Oh, nudge the men around you say, take your place. Take your place. We have responsibility to take our place. What about Gideon? Gideon was called to deliver the nation of Israel. But you know what Gideon did? He went to hide himself in the wine press. No, you were not meant to be in the wine press. You were meant to be visible. You were meant to take your place. You were meant to be relevant. You were meant to be significant. You were meant to be there. You were meant to be there. But Gideon went to the one press where nobody saw him. You know what? In the one press, he couldn't connect with the rest of the world. And the rest of the world couldn't connect with him. He hid himself. He disconnected himself from the life of his family. God is calling us. Take your place. Take your place. Not the men around you say take your place. Amen. Take your place. Take your place. He was a mighty man of valor, but God said, Take your place. Take your place. Men, hear me. To your family, you are a king. Say, I am a king. Oh, say like a king. Say, I am a king. No, say it like a king. Say, I am a king. Amen. You are a king. Say, I am a priest. Say, I am a prophet. Say, I am a king. I am a priest. And I'm a prophet. That's who you are. You must take your place. You know what happened? When Jacob was about to breathe his last breath, he summoned together all his children. You remember that? All his children. And he declared the blessing upon them. And whatever he said to them, that was the outcome of their lives. Say, I am a priest. Say, I am a king. Say, I am a prophet. 
Do you remember Jacob still? When they were coming from the house of Laban, and Rachel was troubled, and Rachel gave birth to a son. As she was giving birth to a son, she was about to die. And she named the son ben Holy, the son of my sorrow. Hear me, mothers in this place. Don't use your past experience to deal with your children. Don't deal with your children on the premise of your past experience based on the earth you've been through. She called that innocent child, Ben Honey. Oh my God. And the prophet and the priest in the house arose. So no, he will not be called Ben Honey. He will be called Benjamin. Benjamin. And the destiny of that boy changed forever. Because the priest in the house, the king in the house, and the prophet in the house, they took their place. Say, take your place. Take your place. God is calling us men to take our place. The Bible says men always ought to pray and not to faint. The third implication of that statement is that it is a call to establish priority. Men always ought to, ought to, so that is priority. God is saying, as a man, you must have a vision. As a man, you must have a direction. As a man, as a father, you must have a priority. You must have a priority. Men, you must make God your priority. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be Men, you must be purposeful. You must be purpose driven. You must have a vision. You must set priority. It is your vision that determines the direction you will go in life. And it's the direction that determines where you will end up. You need a vision. You need a vision for your family. A vision for yourself. A vision for your children. You need a vision. You need a vision. You know, David, Holy Spirit, help me here. You know, David, David had a vision for Solomon. Before David checked out, David went before the Lord and received the vision for the next generation, Solomon. And he received from God the blueprint, Kabo, the blueprint of the temple that Solomon will build. Not the blueprint of the temple that he will build. The blueprint of the temple that Solomon will build. He received that. And before he left, he handed over the vision of the destiny of Solomon to Solomon. Handed over. He handed over. And he gave Solomon everything he required. So that in the days of Solomon, Solomon did not have to start where his father started. Kabul Staya. Thank you, Lord. Your children will not start where you started. Amen. Your children will not start where you started. Amen. Your children will not start where you started. Amen. Everything Solomon needed, the father provided for him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The fourth implication of that verse, men always ought to pray. And not to lose heart. It's a call for men to take action. Somebody say action. Men always, 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 not sometimes, always ought to pray. Action. And not to give up. It is a call to be alert. It's a call to be watchful. It's a call to fight. On your knees. It's a call to say to the devil, you cannot have my children. It's a call to say to, the to say to the devil, you cannot have my wife. It's a call to say to the devil, you cannot have my marriage. It is a call to say to the devil, you cannot mess up with what is precious to me. Men always ought to pray and not to lose all. Always, 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 men must take action. It is a call to fight for the destiny 
of your children. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, from verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a running lion, seeking whom he may devour. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, the devil is not playing games. The devil meant business. The Bible says, oh my God, he's very, very much around. He goes about looking for somebody that is careless. Looking for a father that is oblivious to their responsibility. That he may devour the family. And you have responsibility on your knees. Oh my God, men, hear me. Your wife is not your problem. You didn't hear me. You didn't, let me say again. I said, your wife is not your problem. All right, let me say it again. I said, your wife is not your problem. That's so cold here. All right, let, let's come here. Your wife is not your problem. Can I hear amen? Your wife is not your problem. Ladies, you are not the problem. Men, can I call you to a deeper walk with God? Let me encourage you to hunger and thirst for him. Embrace and dedicate your life to him. Make sure you are taking your place at home, in God's house and in society. You have been called to shine your light so that all men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I will pick up this message from here next time. Once again, thank you so much for all your emails and phone calls. Continue to keep in touch with us with all your testimonies prayer requests and comments. All the details you need are on your screen right now. Till the next time on Maximize Life, God bless you.